Hello Dot Hackers. Today in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to view the textures and the models from the PS2 era of Dot Hack video games. Now the textures and models, such as this right here, is a Grunty from Dot Hack Infection, is part of a file type called CCS. The CCS files are stored in the data.bin files on the PS2 video games. So to do this, we're going to use two programs. The first program will be able to extract the data.bin into the individual .ccs files. And the second program we're going to be using will be able to view the CCS files and the contents included within each of those files. These files include, like you see right here on screen, is the grunties, the grunty food items, objects such as virus cores, chess, and even field objects. In this case is a giant windmill from a grass type field from Dahak Infection. This program can also be used to view enemies, characters, weapons, and a slew of other things as well. Why is it important and who is this for? So full disclaimer, this video is intended for artists. If you're an artist and you want to view from all angles objects throughout the game, this is a good tool to use in order to get a better idea and understanding of some several different characters and objects. If you're a cosplayer, for example, maybe you want to make the weapons from the Dot Hack games, such as Elk's Staff, Mimiru's Sword, Black Rose's Sword, Sora's Blades, Kite's Blades, and so forth. Even Mistral stuff. Everything is on here, including Helba stuff. So, let's say you're into making plushies. And let's say you want to make a plushie of a Grunty. Then this will help you see the Grunty in all angles as you're trying to put together the plushie. Or even polymer clay figures if you want to make by hand, out of clay, some of these objects. And even if you want to make your own garage kit or PVC figure, then this is definitely a good tool to use as a resource to pull up these models and animations. Who is this video not for? This is not for anyone who wants to use these models and textures for commercial use. Obviously, the rights belong to Bandai Namco. So if you are planning to extract these textures and make your own game out of it, I strongly advise you not to do that. You will be infringing on copyright protection laws and get yourself into legal troubles. So I advise you not to do that, but maybe perhaps you want to get into 3D modeling and you want some references or samples to play with to get an idea for your own video game. Then maybe that could be a starting point for you just to tinker around, look around and mess with and understand how objects are animated and modeled. So, it's up to you what to do with this, and let's get started on that. For the purpose of this video, I will be using just the .hack infection files. We're going to be opening this CD here. We're going to go into the folders called data, and pull out the file called data.bin. You can do this with an actual disk, pop it into your CD on your PC, and if you go into your CD drive, you're going to see the folders and files. And you can just quickly grab the data.bin and move it onto your hard drive. Also, if you have a backup copy of the game disk on your PC, you can always open that up as well. So let's begin by looking at the two programs that we're going to be needed in order to get started. First, we're going to be looking at CCS File Explorer, WV. This is a program on GitHub created by Zero Kilo. Zero Kilo also goes by the name of Warranty Voider. The WV at the end of the explorer.wv stands for Warranty Voider. This program can unpack a data bin file from the game ISO. The purpose of this program that we'll be using is so we can unpack the bin files to a folder on our hard drive. So to do that, you're going to go over here to Code, Download Zip. The next program we'll be looking at on GitHub is Studio CCS by NC Dyson. 
to do that so you can hit code and hit download zip as well down below is a readme file this readme file reminds you that this program can be used for infection mutation outbreak quarantine and fragment it can be used on the ps2 tahak gu games and the psp tahak link games you can even use it on .hack GU last recode. And down here, it goes over some of the terms you're going to be running into while using this program, such as clumps, materials, textures, hit meshes, bounding boxes, dummies, animations, as well as the controls on how to use this program. You're going to be using WSAD in order to move on the X and Z axis. So if you want to move forward, backwards, left and right, WSAD is the keys to do that. If you want to move up and down, you're going to be using X and Z to move along the Y axis. You can also export the models and textures into a OBJ file, which is going to be useful if you want to use it on programs such as Blender, 3D Studio Max, and many other 3D animation programs. The most critical part of this program is to mess around with the poses. Now, this program doesn't put it all the files into a neat bone structure that you would see in the game. Not all the times. Most of the times, the bone structure is going to be very contorted, meaning that they're going to be scrunched into a ball and it's your job in order to use the pose feature in order to unravel the character or monsters so down here is going to be some instructions that are going to be very essential on how to do that and i'll go over some of those while we're using the program so once you've obtained these two programs from github as zip files you can go ahead and start doing the necessary process and as a reminder you can also export these into blender if you're more familiar with that or any other 3d animation programs so then with that in mind we can go ahead and begin the process needed in order to do all this so like i said previously if you have the game disc just pop it into your cd tray navigate to your cd drive and begin from there otherwise I'm going to be using my ISO backup file. So here we are. This is my backup file for .hack infection. These are the two programs we downloaded, CCS File Explorer WV and Studio CCS. You can go ahead and right click on that and do extract all. I have seven zip, so I will be using seven zip. Extract to CCS File Explorer WV and then right click the other program and do extract to studio CCS master, which are already done right here. So you can pop the CD in and navigate to data and copy the data.bin over to your hard drive. I'm going to be using this uh, ISO file, but you can do mounts if you wanted. But if you have seven zip, you can always do open archive. This is the structure you're going to see on the disk if you pop it into your cd tray data modules pss stream voice voice underscore e and four files you're going to move into data and the first file data.bin which is the largest file on the disk that's the one you want so you can ignore the rest just click and put it onto your desktop or any folder of your choosing you can go ahead and close that program so that's the file we want. We don't click on it or use it yet. So we're going to move into CCS File Explorer WV. Once you're in there, you're going to see the same file uh, folder structure. Go to bin x86 release and the file name CCX File Explorer WV.exe. Go ahead and open that. You'll get this little prompt right here. Go to file unpack bin. Select the bin file that we moved onto the hard drive, hit open. After we hit this, it's going to immediately ask you where to put the CCS files. So hit open. This little browse for folder thing is going to ask you where do you want to put it. So we're going to go to the folder we're working with right now. 
make a new folder, and we're going to call this volume one. You can name it whatever you want. Hit OK. And down here in green, you're going to see the progress bar moving. And these are the file names that's extracting from the data.bin. When it's done, you're going to see the word done. Hit OK. Close this program. We are done with that program for the remainder of this tutorial. So right here, you see volume one folder that we just made right now. And you'll see 1,023 CCS files. Some of these files will have pretty obvious names. Some take a little work, but you'll see, for example, field and BG. The field and BG files that you see right here are gonna be the fields you enter from the root town and the dungeons that you enter from the fields. Over here, you'll see X, 11, 21, 31, 41, 51, 61, 71, and 81. These are the cursed wave, the phases of Morgana. With Skeeth, Innis, Magus, Gore, Maha, Fitchell, Tarvos, and Corbiniac. You'll also see a file that says town. These are going to be the root towns since this is infection. You only get to see two or three of the towns, but not all of them. You don't see Fort Oof or the Leofal net slums. So you're going to see these towns right here. You're going to also see files that begin with the letter E. 648 up to 780. These 133 files here are the monsters. You'll see files such as XG food. These are the grunty foods, such as la pumpkin, mushroom, piney apple, white cherries, and all the eggs, such as golden egg, immature egg, and so forth. You'll also see sea dog bod, zero through nine, A and B. These are the grunty files. You'll also see one that says Aura 1 Body and Aura 2 Body. One of these has her hands in front of her and the other does not. The files that say CW, I believe stand for Character Weapons. So you have all those from 172 up to 521. It's a 350 weapon models. Now, these are grouped by class, and not all of them are pretty obvious. But you'll notice that some of them have, like for example, HST00, and then HST00 underscore one. These underscore items are just different versions of the original source. So like to be different colors and so forth. So for example, this class right here, is 00, 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06, 07, 08, 09, 010, 11, and 12. That is 13 different weapons for this class. I believe that might be Wave Master. We'll double check when we're in the program. You also see X 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, up to 706. Now these are going to be either the got statues or these are the monster summons. So just an example of what these are. We're going to use what we know from this and we're going to start loading them up in the program. So let's go back to Studio CCS Master. Go to bin, release. Down at the very bottom, the second to last file, studioccs.exe. Go ahead and load that up. You're going to get this little window right here. You can maximize it. You have three windows. This left one right here is your menu tree. The one right here, the, the field and grid, that's where things are going to be loading at. And down at the very bottom is the log message. So we're going to click on File, Load CCS. So let's go ahead and take a look at those grunties. We have file 599 
up to 610, you can select more than one and click on open. You're going to see the log down here telling you it's loading. And over here on the tree, you're going to see C dog bod 0 through 9 A and B. A and B is going to be the baby form of the grunty. Here he is right here. Zoom in with the mouse wheel. So here we have the grunty. B is going to be grunty the kid. Zero is going to be noble grunty. One through nine is going to be the grunties you evolve with specific grunty foods. And like I said, who this tutorial is for, it could be for artists, people who want to make plushies or figurines, or clay figures. Or even cosplay you can navigate all the way around you have some lighting you can view underneath you can view the back the sides any angle you want you can zoom in as well here we have a little skull attached around the grunty's neck and this looks like a little pacifier in the skull's mouth Now the na file names here say E-A-T, eat. That is the animation that the Grunty uses when he eats a Grunty food. E-V-O is evolution. There's a bright light and it like contorts inside himself and expands. Nut, N-U-T, is the neutral position. Nut one is an alternative neutral position. In this case, he's leaping up a little bit. And wall is walking. You can see the little Grunty's little legs walking there. Up here at the top where it says draw options, you can click that, and you can take the grid away, and you can take away the XYZ axis by unselecting draw view center. So that way you can just look around like so. And of course you can just add them back by clicking them back on. B, C dog bod B, is Grunty the Kid. He still has a skull around his neck, though without the pacifier this time. Eats is when he's eating. EVO is evolution. Nut is neutral. Nut 1 is an alternate neutral, which is the prancing animation. And Wall is just the Grunty walking. Zero will be the noble Grunty which is the default grunty you get if you don't use a specific recipe to feed the grunty. So here you can view the grunty from all angles. This one has like a pearl or a seashell on its around its neck. One will be the stray grunty. This is the grunty that's in Dunlor Yog. One of them's name is Johnny. I believe another one's name is Sal. And then from two to nine are going to be the grunties you can get through feeding specific foods to the grunties. Now, for example, this iron grunty has a skull with a metal helmet on it. Here you can see the banner on its side. And you can see the mouth right here where I guess the neck would be. Number three. This poison grunty, his skull has bandages wrapped around its eyes. And unlike the last one where his teeth was on his neck, this one is right where the nose would be. And it has a single eye. The bottom is pretty much green. So this tool will let you do all that. The skull here is a skull. So it's pretty cool. Go ahead and give it a shot and take a look and play around and see what these things can do. To clear the menu, you're going to right click and do unload. If you don't want to sit there and unload all the files, you can just close the program and reload it. So next up, let's take a look at the grunty foods. That would be X food. Here we go, XG Food. We're going to select all the files with that name and open. So here is the golden egg. Now, there is no actual animation. The animation does not make him jump up and down. 
that is a feature from the game itself. So they're basically just moving the model up and down. And they do a little jumping animation in the game. It's not actually handled with the actual animation itself. But here, this allows you to view it from all angles. Recently, a Redditor had asked us, were any of these models available online so they can see all around it? Well, we're going to do some clay, polymer clay figurines out of these. So if you were going to be looking at image, you wouldn't be able to see the back. But now you can see it from all angles. Got mints. If you want to see what the bottom of it looked like, or the top. Twilight Onion. And many more. Bloody Egg. Oh No Melon. Cordyceps. White cherries. Did you know that one of them has a smiley face, the other has a frowny face? Just like the laughter and tragedy moniker. The eyes are also different. One is rounded, one is slanted. Root vegetable. La pumpkin and so forth. Like I said, the CW files, these are weapons. So if I were to hold and click, let's say for example, HST, zero, one, two, three, four, whoops. Let's try it again, zero, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Enter. Open these up. Now, animations is not going to show anything for weapons, so you're going to go to clumps. Open that up and click the first one. So, this is Wave Master. So, HST stands for Wave Master. Here we have Wise Man Staff. Wise Man is a Wave Master that you meet later on in the game. Here we have Elk Staff, so we can use Z and X to go up and down. And you can see right here, Elk Staff has a ribbon that goes from the handle here all the way down to the base. And Elk Staff has that Nautilus looking crescent here on the top with a green orb in the middle so if you're like doing cosplay for example you would want to make like a staff either made of metal or something lighter and you make it look metal and then the staff you want to do maybe some cardboard or foam to go around and then when you do the orb maybe like a string across and put like a little ball in the middle but this program allows you to view it from all angles so you can get a better idea of what that's supposed to look like there's mistral staff it's pretty flat on the cross as you see right there so there's not really much depth to it uh, mistral staff was also shown in the anime legend of the twilight and that one looked a little bit thicker, more 3D looking than this little flat texture that you see right here. So like I said, HST are all wave masters, like this one with a skull with an eyeball in the mouth and some ribs. This one with a hand on a staff with a book and a quill. 
this one with a monster of some kind. This one with three points on top with a ball in the middle. There's Helba Staff with the three prongs. Yeah, three prongs on the bottom. And many more weapons you can pull up. But let's look at something else. Let's say you want to look at some monsters. The monsters are the E files. If I were to click this one here, open that up. I go to animations. We have ATC0 and ATC1. These are its attack animations. And as you see, the monster is loaded on its side at a 90 degree angle instead of vertically. This is what I was referring to earlier. Uh, but also the arms are twisted. If I were to look around here, here's its right arm over its shoulder. And his left arm is bent down this way, holding onto the sword. So you would want to mess around with the bones in order to fix this. Attack zero, attack one, damaged, the monster taking damage. Not sure what down means. Move of its movement and nut is neutral. So in order to begin moving this character around, you're going to select neutral, like the readme files stated. You're going to right click that, do set pose. Open up clumps, click on the first one, and do edit bones. So this pulls up the screen. You have a tree up here. We're going to move this to the side. And we're going to be using this window from now on. If you were to click on the other window, this window would fall behind. So make sure that this is always viewed on top. So we have OBJ trail, OBJ T0, OBJ T0 footsteps, pelvis, spine, Thigh left, thigh right, spine, calf left, foot left, toe left, calf right, right foot, right toe, neck, head, clavicle, upper arm left, upper arm right, forearm left, hand left, finger left so with this you can get down to each part of the body and move it into any pose you want you'll be using rotation in order to make it stand up and you could change the scale for example if you wanted to give it a bigger shield uh, for this however we are going to click on i believe pelvis here and let's maybe set that to zero. You have to use update, you can't press enter. So that made it upside down. Let's do 180. Perfect. So here we have it standing up now. But its arms are still all twisted. And like I said, since I clicked on the other window, this one disappeared. So we have to bring that back up. It's kind of a headache. You can actually move this window inward, like so, if you wanted. So that way the other window doesn't disappear all the time. Uh, for example, let's look at clavicle. This is left. I'm not sure if it's my left or his left. Let's play with that and see what it does. Let's change this to 90 and see what moves. So, that is his left, not my left. So let's do negative 90. And let's look at the other arm. Let's change this 160 to, let's see what zero does. Okay, so that moved the arm out to a better position. Let's go back to the other clavicle. Let's take away that 90. Let's see what zero does. A little bit better. 
but yeah, you're going to be using rotation with XYZ in order to rotate and move his arms correctly. Once again, this is one of the monsters in the game. And whatever position you get it in, you can actually save your progress by going to Edit, Save Pose. Let's type in Monster1, that's its name. And let's say you close the program accidentally or lost your progress or you want to go back you can go to edit and load pose select monster one dot bin and it will snap it back to the position that you previously had made so let's say for example i click on that so now he's back to his side again we go to edit load pose monster bin update oh wait I need to click on, there it goes. Perfect. I forgot you had to click on the, the clump that I was working with previously. So, there you go. He's back into his position, and I can continue configuring him the way he was, or the way I want him to be. For example, his feet are kind of messed up. So, that's just a matter of finding his feet. So, here we have right foot, left foot, calves, thighs, this is what you're going to be using to adjust them. So let's look at something else. Let's take a look at the phases of Morgana. So here we have X11 through 81, files 785 to 792, hit open. So here we have X11, this will be Scaife. Now this is the American disc, so he's going to have the Q instead of the cross. And he's going to be at a 90 degree angle until you do the edit pose thing and fix them. So you could do set pose, select the clump, hit edit bones, and you're going to move this window around. And let's see here if I put this to zero. Oops, 180. So we're on pelvis, rotation X, 180 will make him upright the way he's supposed to be. Um, but by default, this animation does have his hand a little bit backwards here. But here we have Scaife. Scaife or however you want to pronounce his name. That was attack, damage, match, I believe is magic, nut is neutral, X attack, this is when it's in its data drained form, X DEA and X nut. Now if we were to open up clumps, we're gonna be looking at, all two is his data drained form. Here we have his sword. So apparently, Skase Wand, that most people refer to it, is actually referred to internally in the game as a sword, which when you think about it, he kind of did use it as a sword in his fight with Orca. So if you wanted to view the cross version, you will need the Japanese version of Daha Confection in order to pull that up. So that was Skase. We also have the other phases, such as in this little jigsaw looking piece this is Magus this is Fitchell let's zoom up this 
This is Gore. Now, Gore has two bodies side by side. This yellow one with this skull and this fish head here. And its other form, which has a blue gem with a rose and this other fish head. These are usually side by side. And they usually have a face coming out of the, the stone, which you won't see until you load up one of these other positions like this one for example they can see his face which would be coming out of the stone number six is maha now because of the once again how the models are loaded they're not loaded correctly so the north american version or the finalized japanese and north american version has maha having these little quills like sonic the hedgehog they are tipped in purple, and her hands are purple, and she's also wearing a silver bra. Now, if you're into the cutting room floor um, terminology, you'll find out that the Japanese disc for infection does not have her looking like this at all. She does not have purple hands. She does not have a silver bra. She is completely topless, and her hair is not these quills it is a wavy flowing type of hair so if you were to load that up you could see what i'm referring to and in order to fix her standing up you would have to hit set pose select the clump and bones go to pelvis change that value Oop. some of the characters are different so since she was already laying down I believe it would be t0 There we go. So this one would be T0 in order to make her stand up. And then of course you would have to open up this pelvis spine and then find her arms. Thigh, thigh, spine is where we're going to find the arms. We have spine three, neck, clavicle. So these are going to be what you're going to use in order to put her hands back out the way they're supposed to be. That one. Oops, too far. There, kind of. But as you can see, it is all doable. You can definitely move everything around. And hopefully get the arms where they need to be. So with that, that's pretty much it. If you want to export something, let's say you want to export a character, you go to Scene, Dump to OBJ. You can click this button right here to find a folder where you want to drop it and give it a file name. You can also use these options such as export collision meshes, split sub model pieces, export model normals, export dummies to text, and dump anime first frame to text. And then hit export. Other things you can do, for example, If you wanted to view, for example, let's load up Scathe. If you wanted to do wireframe and you want to get rid of the textures, you can view that as well. Now 
let's load a field. Let's go with the first one, field A. Now, fields will have some animations. This looks like a fire field of some kind. Sometimes the animations do load, otherwise, sometimes they'll be looking still. So these are all the set pieces from a fire dungeon, or sorry, a fire field. Get rid of the grid, you can see it better. And let's get rid of the X and Y axis. Different structures that you'll see in a fire field. Clumps will also have some more, like this is the dungeon entrance. So the dungeon entrance is not animated. At the front of the dungeons, you'll see like two braziers that have like smoke flying up. That's not part of the model texture. Now let's load one that does have an animation. Let's look at field A1. Let's see what that is. A1 is a data drain version of the one we saw. So if it has a number at the end, that's going to be the data drain or data bug version. Let's pull up BG. BG is Hmm. Let's try BGA1. Don't think that's going to be a data bug. Oops. Okay, so that's a skybox. So those are the backgrounds for the fields and dungeons. Let's pull up. Let's do a couple of fields. Let's do field B, C, D. There's no E or F, but there's a G and H. Let's see what those are. So this is, don't remember. That's quite interesting. There's a giant weapon coming right out of the dungeon entrance for this one. I got two swords here. Looks like one of the sand ones. Don't believe it has anything animated. Don't recall seeing any animated parts of the sand dungeons. So yeah, nothing there. Another sand one. It's the one with the giant shell. This is one of the frozen castle entrances. So that's H. Let's continue on. Let's find the bursting aqua field dungeon or field entrance. Field I. K. M. Do it again. P. Oh, this is one of the creepier ones. If I load up the animation for that, this one is the one with the hands in front of the mouth. Now you'll notice the hands on the left over here are facing the wrong direction. They should be both facing inward. So this one you would have to edit the bones on. This is the mushroom ones. And finally, here we go. This is the grass done, uh, fields leading to the dungeon there. Now the grass ones does have some animated. Like that windmill we saw. And here it is, the windmill. And this is one of the bursting aqua bursting Passover aqua field dungeon or field. But it has a lot of little windmills throughout the entire land. So we have Tome, 
I'm guessing some kind of grave looking things. But yeah, these are pretty beautiful just to take a look at. Things like this little bucket that's hanging around that usually has a, um, a buff magic spell right in front of. But overall, pretty interesting tool. You can get some better perspective on the video games and all the little details that go into it. Especially if you're an artist and you want to draw more world building of dot hack into your images, your comics, or whatever have you. Definitely a good perspective to take a look at. But that's all I have for you today, so if you liked this video, please be sure to give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and join our Dollhack Discord, and thank you for watching.